It is Wednesday, September 2nd, and here is your update with everything to do with LWA, UI, stimulus, and COVID coming at you now. Number one, to unemployment and lost wage assistance news. A lot of the states are rolling it out now, which is fantastic. Only one state has said they don't want it. That is South Dakota. Apparently they're doing so well, they don't need the extra cash. Good for them, but we do. So to New York, they have said that they are only guaranteeing three weeks of back pay so far. Then it will be on a week by week basis. So that will be week ending August the 2nd, August the 9th, and August the 16th. Uh, And then it's going to be a wait and see. Unfortunately, they've also said it's going to take them weeks maybe months to pay this out. So that is some really disappointing news, but it means we're going to get at least 900 bucks in back pay. Unfortunately, we can't eat in back pay, but it is something. Um, This will put way more pressure on the Senate and the Congress to have some sort of deal, and so it bloody should. Number two, to the stimulus package deal. So there's been a little bit of movement there. Now the RNC is out of the way, the DNC is out of the way. We can get back to the business of looking after the American people. Uh, The Secretary of the Treasury, Stephen Mnuchin, was grilled by Congress the other day. He's talking about doing a line-by-line bill, and that would be, what do you agree on? Yes, no. We agree on $1,200 checks. Great. What do you agree on? We agree on this. Great. This. Great. And try and, like, go really with the minutia of it. Mnuchin with the minutia. Uh, this is looking a little bit rocky, but they have brought their bid up to 1.2 trillion. That is still a trillion dollars less than what the Democrats want at 2.2 trillion. But it's looking like the Senate Republicans are going to try and introduce a $500 billion bill in the next week and try and push it through the Senate. That is unlikely to happen. I doubt they're going to get the 60 votes they needed, but... It may uh, push to get something uh, done as we've been in this stalemate for so long. And at least it's a signaling that they want something done for Christ's sake. So watch that space. Number three, on COVID, the CDC has let the states know that they are expecting to have two different vaccines ready to use by the end of October, early November, just in time for the election. As I said before, this is going to be that October surprise for the Republicans. The two vaccines that look the most likely are the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. And they've said they're going to have 10 million doses ready by the end of October. And that's going to be mainly for frontline workers and in the high risk groups with 100 million further doses ready by the end of this year. This is both good and bad news. It's good that we're moving forward with a vaccine. That's fantastic. Get us out of our houses and get us back to work. But it could erode confidence in a vaccine if it is released too early and it A, doesn't work, has some major side effects, um, and it just it erodes trust in vaccines. But on the other side, it's good that they're moving something through. Watch that space. I'm telling you, end of October, we're going to have a couple of EUA vaccines ready to go. Whether they'll work is to be seen. Also, with the CDC... Uh, That second of Trump's um, executive actions about an eviction moratorium, the CDC will be handling that now. So if you cannot pay your rent, you need to contact the CDC. They will contact your landlord and put an eviction moratorium in place. This looks like they're not going to actually pay your back rent, so you're still going to owe it, but you can't be kicked out. It's something from the feds. It's still not enough. So hopefully as part of this second stimulus deal, we're going to have some sort of rent abatement. Remember, as part of the Democrats Heroes Act, there was actually $100 billion put aside just to help people pay their rent. So let's hope that something like that comes through. Number four, New York opening news. So uh, a restaurant in Queens has started a class action lawsuit to get restaurants open. This is the second such class action that is going to be on Cuomo's desk. Uh, This is a restaurant in Queens that's apparently 500 feet from a Long Island restaurant that can open. And they're like, what the hell, man? This is crazy. And I agree with them. We should be moving forward with some sort of reopening plan. It's incredibly unfair that one little part of the state can't open just because we have more people here. We've been so safe. We're less than 1% infection rate for the past almost two months. We look after ourselves. We're New York tough. So this is actually being brought forward by the same law group that put together the gym class action lawsuit, which then prompted Cuomo to open up the gyms. So 
I think in the next two to three weeks, we might have some sort of 25%, 30% opening of indoor uh, bars and restaurants, which is fantastic. As long as we're following the science and following the guidelines, this is exactly what needs to happen. Because if they're not going to help us, we need to help ourselves. And it's about time we are responsible, we are smart, we are New Yorkers, and we can do it. So that is my news for today. Please like and subscribe. I'll be back as anything else breaks. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.